fellow makers, welcome back to the Makers Workshop. Season two, and that stands for two years later. Uh, because in the 2020, we've not only had a major pandemic and a fire, unfortunately, which damaged some of the workshop, it, it just was a year of without motivation. But it's 2021. There is hope in the air. Everything's going on, and it's time to get things started. So here at the Makers Workshop, we have a nice, clean work surface. Once again, just like the first episode. But this time, for sure, it'll be fine. We have today something kind of cool. Now, this is not a sponsored video, but it is a product video. I was given a review unit of a... Oh, here we go. Here it comes. Oh, oof. Oh, 3D printer. Um, this 3D printer was provided to me by a company called Focus. Yes, this is pronounced... Focus. Focus. And it's the Focus Odin 5 F3. What does this mean? I have no idea. But it sounds cool, and that's probably the whole point of it. The Odin 5 printer is very much like the uh, stock of you know, double lead screw axis printers, like the Creality Ender 3, you know, that style of printer. Um, it's meant for the beginner's market, and it has, you know, all the basic features you'd expect in a Marlin-based, Marlin 2.0-based Marlin based printer. It is an open source printer. They have provided the firmware for this printer. Uh, it is downloadable, so I will provide a link for that in the description below. However, um, this is the first time we've had a look at it. This is a true unboxing, so we're going to open up this thing. But uh, in general, it's a, uh, you know, kind of a simple to use printer. It's supposed to have a touch panel based display, touch panel based run. We're going to make this thing go just from the get go as it is. But of course, since this is an unboxing video, we need to open this box. Oh boy. Okay. Well, it should be pretty easy. We just need to open up this tab over here. Okay, move it over, open this tab over here, it's open. Okay, we'll carefully open the box and see what's inside. So this printer is supposed to be a easy to print with, easy to use, and easy to set up machine. Now if we look inside, they've actually provided everything all in one. Here we go. So there's like a spool of filament here. Looks like the machine is all wrapped up. And they call this the first quote unquote foldable 3D printer. Okay, that claim is probably a little hyperbole, but let's see how easy this thing is to set up. I am seeing this for the first time, just like you. All right, so we will upend this box here. Oh, unload this printer onto the table. All right, here we go, ready? I want to be very, very kind to this thing. We'll just kind of dump it out. There we go. That was solid, huh? Okay, let's take a look at this thing. So, here we go. Let's take this top off. Hey, uh, it looks like it's got a really nice, um, oh, look, you can see the reflection here of the lights up above. Let me tilt that a little, maybe it'll help. There you go. So it's got a really nice glass build plate, it looks like, on top. Let's take some of this material away. Have a look at what's inside. All right. Oops, simple on that side. All right, let's take the side off here. It's really, really superbly packed. They did a great job of packing this printer. Usually you just get a bit of cardboard. This is very, very nice custom packaging. Look at this. Yeah. All right, doubt I'll ever be able to get it back in there. All right, let's take off some of this. And lead screw protectors. Okay, another lead screw protector. All right. There we go. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. Um, carriage looks like the carriage is put in with a zip tie. 
Uh, they've got this coated glass, Boris looks like a borosilicate glass build plate it's held in with clips and some, some pieces we're going to have to cut to get to the printer itself. So let's, uh, let's do that, shall we? So first things first, I'm going to get rid of these zip ties that are holding everything in place. So I'm going to get rid of that zip tie. So one over here. Actually, I'm not going to clip that one quite yet because it's holding the carriage in place. All right. So let's lift this off of its base here carefully. All right, looks like it comes with an accessory box. We'll have a quick look inside of this shortly. And, oh, a little spool of filament. Look at that. Wow, look how nicely this is packed. Comes with a desk and gel. And it looks like it's PLA. Yeah, PLA plus, 1.75 millimeter. Um, no name. Although they say it's Focus. Focus. Focus filament. There we go. All right. Now, let's take a look. We'll put this aside for a second. Let's look at the nitty gritty here. We need to get this uh, printer going here. So we're going to use the uh, paddle blade of cutting. We'll take off this wrapping here that they put. There we go. All right. Uh, that's pretty solidly in there. All right. We'll protect this thing there. In the garbage. Okay, let's take a look at this printer. So, uh, they claim it's as easy as unfolding it. Let's see what this does. Up, 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 up. Boom. Yeah. Yep, yep. That looks pretty simple. Well, let's look in the accessory box. I guess we're going to need some stuff from in here. Comes with a quick start guide. Quick start guide. Uh, let's have a look what it says about the quick start guide. Well, <clears throat> my eyes are going here. It says lift 90 degrees, install, put the, uh, looks like you put a rod in, uh, install the, uh, the, uh, the ribbon cables that run it. Nuts on the pulleys on the hotbed, screws on the belt. Okay, well, let's see if we can make that go. Uh, comes with a number of screws. Got a power cable, we're gonna need that. Uh, this looks like ah, a needle to clear the hot end. The ribbon cables that are used to communicate with the printer. A USB cable for whatever, PC, Raspberry Pi. Ah, uh, look at that. I've got another cutter spudger. Fantastic. All right, got a spudger. Ah, um, oh yes, the micro SD with some printer files. Maybe some firmware. Oh, that's nice. Looks like it uses a volcano style hot end. Look how long the, uh, look how long the printer nozzles are. That is interesting. So if it is a volcano style, this could be really good for, for high temperature prints. The usual IKEA style assortment of tools. Nice that they provide them because that makes this a lot easier to set up. Uh, what do we have in here? Looks like a couple end caps for the uh, rods at the top. The other part of the spool holder. Uh, I can do that assembly a little early here. There you go. Look at that. All right. Probably will never use this. And then finally, from Zuron Corp, manufacturer of the Micro Shear brand, made in the USA. So this thing had to go from the USA to China and back to the USA. Pretty cool. Made in Maine. Look at that. Maine made. Let's have a look at this. Oh, wow. Actually, these are a nice pair of flush cutters. And if you, I don't know if you can see this on the camera. Focus, focus, focus. Look at that. Absolutely. I mean, this, this is electronics grade. It's quite nice. All right. Well, we've got a nice pair of flush cutters. Uh, here's a comparison. So here's my little pair of no-name flush cutters right there. And the Zerons. Not bad. All right. Let's uh, recycle this box. Box is being recycled. All right. Now, bear with me for just one moment. 
we're going to change perspectives. Okay, now we've got the over the shoulder cam. Hello. All right, so we're going to look at putting this together according to its manual and the quick start setup guide. So according to this quick start setup guide, we now need to raise the thing 90 degrees and straighten the machine. All right, let's do that. All right. Well, there we go. Well, that's, that was kind of ridiculously easy. That's actually a lot easier than it was to set up, uh, originally set up my, um, my Creality. You see our 10 and the Ender. I mean, the Ender was mostly assembled, but this is something else. So we got two hexagon socket M5x8s, two M4x8s, and three T-nuts. Now, they don't actually say which one you're going to use here, but it turns out that there is another manual. Let's see if they say something about it here. Yep, here it is. It says, take out four M5 by five screws. Now, we have M5 by eights, which are basically the same. So we're going to grab four of these, and we will use them to raise the stand and insert things into the four holes in total that they claim exist. So there are five screws, and I happen to have the correct tool from my collection here, but they do provide the tools. All right, well, we'll put this in here. Now, I'm not gonna claim this is exactly 90 degrees. I could probably do a better job, but there it is, that was put together. Let's turn this machine around, do the same thing to the other side. This is a nice looking machine. I mean, it's a really nice looking machine. I'm, I'm super surprised. There's the other bolt right there. So let's do that. Now I note that I can see the SD card slot here and the USB to connect it to a computer. Uh, it's a USB-B port. That's actually nice because it's very easy to find printer cables. And for a beginner's style machine like this, it's really a good idea is to use something that's very commodity and easy to buy. All right, ooh, taking off the plastic protector. Oh, that's just satisfying as heck. Now these clips that they're using here are becoming kind of the norm, the standard for securing beds. Um, I'm gonna unclip this bed so I can show it to you a little better. Also so I can take off the protective sheet. But um, they're very easy to take off. I use these, um, you can see you've got the, the little tabs here. It makes it a lot simpler to take these on, put them on and off. And they are using a really nice bed. Okay, the quality here is a lot higher than I normally would expect from this kind of stuff. So let's uh, do that satisfying peel. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. Okay, so if we look at this, this is a, looks like it's a carbon, yeah, that's a carbon silicone pattern on here. Really sticky for PLA, and they do provide a clean glass side and this kind of extra sticky side. That's really nice. Um, now on the lower plate, be aware, there is a piece of protective film here, and it is just a protective film. This isn't like required for the printer. You should remove this. So I'm gonna do that right now. Remove this protective film. There we go. Now we've just got a nice clean, bye-bye. So a nice clean aluminum plate and a really nice and clean borosilicate glass plate. Look at that. Beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. All right, now, put the clips back on and that's it. Look at that. Now everyone's got a different idea of where these clips should go. I happen to like them. I happen to like putting them along the side instead of the front and the back, but you put them on the front and the back, you can put them on the side. They seem to be fairly agnostic about the placement, but I'll put them here for now. So two and then three. These little pre-made clips just make life so much easier with printers like this. 
Um, they're be they become available for printers like the CR10 and the Ender as well uh, if you don't have a magnetic build plate, which a lot of people do. All right, now, I should tell you that this is a heated bed. It does have a cable, and I can feel uh, heater elements under it, so this is a, you know, a step up from a lot of the other kinds of things that we find usually on these things. Mm, actually, you know what? I'm going to go front and back. I'm allowed to change my mind. Let's go here. There we go. Let's go here. There's a there's a little bit of clearance here, and so I'm gonna make sure that I don't hit anything on the side or mar this thing. I should make it easier. Just on the hole to deal with this. There we go. All right, front and back then. There, easy peasy. Nice. All right, so we got these two in. Uh, let's see if, where it says if there are any other screws that it expects me to put in. It said four, and I am looking for the fourth. Aha! Back here. So to either side of the post. So let's do that. So they give you a spare screw. There you go. All right, let's turn this around. On the other side. And there we go. Okay. That's it. That, that is set up, basically. Um, all right. So, they do say that they'd like us to put this material rack on the top of the machine. I assume that is why they provide these, uh, these T-nuts and these four millimeter screws is to put this on. And they always seem to find this one extra screw. That's, that's really just nice of them. So, put the spare screw back in its bag. Put the bag back in the bigger bag. There we go. And, uh, you know, I, uh, yeah, what the heck. Sure, let's, let's put this on. Why not? So, grab a couple of those, grab a couple of those. And uh, yeah, it should be easy as pie. So we stick the screws on top of this. There we go, easy peasy. Stick a couple heck of nuts down here. So these should be inserted with the, uh, the flat side facing up. I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. These are self-locking T-nuts. So you just put them in, you insert them, and as you turn, they will lock up. They'll actually... Uh, secure the part. They're very, very convenient if you know how to use them. There we go. So there we go. Like that. And uh, this is going to be a little off camera. So I'm going to go up above the machine here. And I'm going to just insert them here. It's, you'll see it on the completed machine in just a second. I need a slightly smaller screw uh, driver. So it's a the T10, T10 driver here. I'll put it up here. I'm just gonna put it in the middle. Really put it wherever you like. There we go. That locks that in place. That locks the other one in place. As I said, I am a bigger fan of using uh, off machine style mountings, but it should work. All right, that's done. So let's uh, put these back in the baggie. I'm going to raise the camera in a second, and we will continue the, uh, the bed leveling process. All right, at this point, we are going to go through the leveling process, the bed leveling process of the machine. So, I've got the instruction manual in front of me, but you're going to be following along with me on the screen. So, first things first, we're going to need to plug this printer in. And it has a pretty standard power cable for the United States, and then it's got a C20 style and here, and it just plugs in in the back. So I just need to find the plug back here. There we go. Give it a quick plug here. Give me a moment here. Find the orientation of this thing. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. And we'll do first power up. Ah, 
Ah, uh, look. Focus. Uh, let me turn the printer so you can get a better view. The display here. There we go. All right, we're going to go through the leveling steps here. So let me uh, bring this down here. All right, sorry about the bouncy cam. It's at its extension. All right, so we are going to go through the bed leveling process. So, I believe first we go tool, and then we're gonna home the machine. Oh, to home the machine, we must finish taking care of some things up above. So I will trim off the cables. So there's a, some pieces there, remember, that were up above and zip tied into place. We need to get those out. Okay, the next steps here are to plug in the cables. So we'll do that right now. There we go. It goes right here. There we go. And this one goes here on the side. And uh, that one doesn't have any other special connectors. It's, it's just a push in. There it goes. Just pushes in. That's it. Uh, now, normally at this point, you would adjust the tension of and the uh, tightness of the lower rider on the uh, on the x-axis carriage on the y-axis. But in this case, this machine's actually really well set up out of the box. In fact, if I pan down here, there you go. Um, let's see if we can hear this. It's actually well tensioned. Uh, yours may not be as well set up out of the box, but mine was, so that's pretty good. Now, I've already plugged in the power cord back here. So let's turn it on and go through the bed leveling process. Oh, that was loud. Let me uh, bring the camera down. Bear with me here for a second. Let's see if we can get a smooth translation down here. And see if we can get a view of the leveling state. Now, like most printers of this type, it has some knobs under here and a, kind of a basic run through. So to set this one up, we press tool. I'm gonna home the machine and we're going to home all the axis. There it goes. X, Y, and Z axis are homing. And for the first time it falls down, goes down. Now this machine has a z-axis it's uh, not a, an auto probing machine so it actually has a z-axis uh, optical sensor let's bring this down so you can see this again go. oh, just the camera just the camera there we go <laughs> I want you to be able to see what i see there you go this down a bit while it finishes homing. Oof, sorry about all the lighting issues here today. See the studio light there, so let's see if I can adjust that a bit. Get you out of the studio lights. There we go, good enough. All right, now that we've gotten that going, we will now go through the leveling process. So I'll go back and we will do the leveling process. Now, this is a manual leveling machine. It's an entry, you know, it's, a, it's an initial entry machine. Now, it uses an MKS Robin motherboard. There is enough pins on it and it does use Trinamic drivers. So it might be possible to do automatic homing in the future with a firmware update and a piece of extra hardware, like maybe a BL touch on this side or uh, using plate pressure leveling sensing. We'll see that in the future, but for now, this is the unboxing experience. So what you do is we'll go to point one and we will actually use a, uh, just the, the manual itself or a piece of paper to, uh, to check the level of the machine. Actually, I think we're gonna use a piece of paper to do it, so. There we go. Now a piece of paper is generally around 100 microns. So any piece of paper will do. And let's go to point one. There it is. Now 
All right, now, to adjust this point, we need to, if you turn this way, you're going to pull the bed down. Turn the other way, you're going to you know, turn uh, clockwise, down, counterclockwise, up. And what you want to do is you want to get it so that the nozzle just barely touches the paper. So you should feel the paper just drag along the nozzle. That means the distance between the nozzle and the plate is now about uh, 100 micron. So 0.1 of a millimeter. And now we will do this for all the points. I'll speed this up so that you don't have to see me do it over the actual amount of time. But here we go. Point two. All right, time for the print. So what I have loaded here is the card that they've provided. So I use the, uh, the little USB dongle, check the files. They have a bunch of preloaded ones. What we're gonna do is set the hot end to its uh, printing temperature with a preheat. It's all very easy to use with the touch screen. Um, and that's it. So. Once it's up to temperature, we will, let's do it. Print, G-code. And everyone's favorite one is the Benchy. So confirm. All right, let's talk about this. This is a sub $300 printer. In fact, it's closer to $200 than $300. There's a $90 coupon for this thing on Amazon right now. Let us look at this Benji. Remember, this came straight off of the manufacturer's little flashcard. I didn't slice this, I didn't use their software you can see almost all the details. So there's the little motor bottom. The bow is nearly perfect. There's a little tiny bit of, if you can see it, a little tiny bit of elephant's foot at the bottom. That may be more to my leveling than due to anything. The bottom very clearly shows the uh, printing. Again, I hope you can see this on camera, but it does correctly say CT3D, XYZ, all the way down the bottom here. The, the Benchy itself, there's a little bit of roughness right here, but nothing major. I mean, you can see all the minor details. The top looks good. The stack looks excellent. And the stringing is, is something you can do by tuning retraction. But this may be the best Benchy I ever printed right off of a card, like with no tuning at all, no, no adaption. What can I say? This. The out-of-box experience with this printer is amazing. Now, another thing to note is uh, this bed uh, with its material here. This is a, uh, a lattice of silicone and carbon. It's the new thing in bed plates. I mean, it's really, really good at holding on to this material, this PLA. Did fine. What can I say? Good job, Focus. So this is the Focus Odin printer, the Odin 5 F3. And uh, i got to say, it's a very capable little printer. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put down in the description below here uh, some configurations files for Cura. I'm going to follow this video up with uh, how to slice a uh, basic uh, calibration cat with uh, Cura. So here's one of my calibration cats I did for another printer. I'm going to do one on this printer and test it out. And then that will be our follow-up. All right. So, focus. Two thumbs up. Nice job. Great printer. Uh, I'm also going to put down in the description and in the link 
uh, a link to Amazon where you can get this printer. Um, I have to say they, they did a pretty good job out of the park. So, hey. So I had a lot of fun with you guys today. This was a great printer. Uh, I love it when I get to bring you new technology and new things like the uh, Focus printer. I hope to bring you some new stuff soon. Uh, remember I owe you some profiles and we're going to go over how to use Quota Slicer with the Focus printer. But to remind you, you have been watching the Maker's Workshop. I bring you DIY maker videos and how to do stuff yourself, stuff that's going on in the maker community, hopefully with bi-weekly updates. Now, if you liked what you saw, I'd really, really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and press that bell and notification icons for when I do new uploads. Uh, we should be having some pretty cool stuff coming up, including some giveaways uh, as I do some more uh, reviews as well as projects. Thank you for watching today. I hope you have a great time. Uh, I also would like to give a shout out to my friend Steven on his channel. He's working on a pick and place called The Index, and I will also put a link to his videos down below.